Greetings and welcome to what is a milestone for Rusty and me. This is our 100th video. And uh, this one is going to be a response to a viewer inquiry about cathode bypass capacitors. Now I know I've touched on this topic uh, several times in other videos, but today let's settle down and take a real close look at what's going on within the vacuum tube. Also we'll review some uh, other principles that we've discussed uh, and then take a look at the effect of the cathode bypass cap both on uh, volume and on tone. Rusty, are you ready to celebrate our hundredth video? Huh? Are you as excited as I am? Rusty. Oh God! Thanks Rusty, I can tell you're excited. Okay, let's start off by taking a look at a circuit that is used in almost all preamps uh, in guitar amplifiers, and it's called the common cathode circuit. It's called that because the cathode, the output, and the input all are connected to ground through resistors, so they have that in common, thus the name. Uh, before we continue though, let's cover just a few basics. Number one, uh, the grid in the vacuum tube is always biased a little negative. And the reason for that is that we want to suppress the flow of current from the cathode to the plate. We know that the electrons here want to flow to the very positively charged plate. And we have the grid in between uh, that is charged a negative, it's with a bias voltage, to keep the flow of current under control to moderate it to a reasonable level to prevent the tube from overheating and self-destructing. Next, into this negatively biased grid, we put in our input signal. Okay, it's fairly weak. Uh, now the electrons here have amassed on the cathode and as I said, really want to go to the plate. Uh, the negative grid suppresses them somewhat. Now when the signal comes in, when the signal has a positive upswing like it does here, it tends to neutralize some of that negative bias and allows the electrons to really start flowing. Then when the signal moves to a negative part of the uh, curve, it's going to actually enhance the negative bias here and really suppress the flow of electrons. So the end result is uh, at the plate, a huge flow of electrons when the input signal is positive and a very low flow of electrons when the input signal is negative. So we have the amplified output from the plate that gives us the step up in amplification that we want in a preamp tube. Now a problem arises because the grid is constantly suppressing the flow of electrons from the cathode to the plate. Sometimes it doesn't uh, suppress them very much and sometimes it suppresses them a lot but it's always uh, suppressing the flow of current from cathode to plate. This continued suppression actually creates a negative feedback effect with the cathode. And as we studied in negative feedback loops, once you set up a negative feedback type of uh, relationship, you're going to lower the gain in your tube and uh, suppress all the frequencies that are trying to get from the cathode to the plate. This negative feedback relationship is called cathode degeneration, which, and I don't think that's a very descriptive term. I call it cathode constipation, because let's face it, we've got an accumulation here of signal that can't get to the plate, and uh, it causes us a lot of discomfort. So, instead of taking a laxative, uh, there is an easier method uh, and that is you connect a cathode bypass capacitor from the cathode to ground. If I put in a very, very low value bypass capacitor, I will enhance the treble 
or high frequency output from the preamp stage because by alleviating the high frequency congestion I allow those frequencies to pass through at an enhanced rate while the mid-range and bass frequencies are still suppressed. If I want to enhance the mid-range then I would put in a larger bypass cap. If I want to also enhance the bass response I would put in a much larger bypass capacitor and in every case I will be greatly augmenting the gain of the preamp stage. Now um, generally it's sort of just guesswork you start plugging in bypass caps until you get the tone you like but uh, there is a program on the internet that uh, does a calculation for you and will show the output spectrum from the preamp stage for different preamp tubes based on the value of the cathode bias resistor and the cathode bias capacitor. It will help you select the proper cathode bypass cap to get the output spectrum that you want. And we will see uh, once we start using this uh, calculator that the law of diminishing returns is going to set in. And uh, say a 20 microfarad bypass cap gives you really nice base response, 50 or 100 will not really give you much more base response. And we'll see how this phenomenon uh, looks when we uh, compare the output spectrum to the cathode bypass cap value. Okay, now we're looking at the amp books amplifier calculator for cathode bypass capacitors. Um, I'm going to put a link to this site in the description of the video so that you can go there and try this for yourself. Okay, I've got it set up for the 12AX7 which is by far the most common preamp tube. Uh, they don't offer a zero bypass capacitor which or no bypass capacitor so this is their lowest value. This will show us what uh, the system looks like when you really don't have a cathode bypass cap. Grid resistor is 1 meg, plate resistor is 100k, cathode resistor is 1.5k. These are very typical values. Virtually all Fender amps use 1.5k on their cathode bias resistors for the 12AX7s. Now here's what we'll notice. Down here this is the low E. This is the base gain and then this is the high frequency gain. Remember these numbers 29.5, 29.5. Okay, that will be the gain with essentially no cathode by, uh, bypass capacitor. Look here at the spectrum. Look at uh, the frequencies that are going to pass uh, with essentially no cathode bypass cap. Zero until we get up here to about two, three, four, five, six, six and seven thousand cycles per second. I think you can imagine that this is going to be one shrill, brittle output signal. Also at very low gain. Okay, now let's change it and take one step in the right direction. Let's put in a one microfarad bypass capacitor. We'll leave everything else the same hit compute. Wow, what a difference. Remember our original spectrum was way over here with no frequency response until we got to about five or six thousand. Now we've shifted way over here so that the uh, frequencies at about uh, 150 cycles per second are starting to really show up in our signal. And also look at the improvement here in gain. We're now up to almost 31 decibels at low uh, frequency and uh, 35 decibels, 35.5, at high frequency. Remember those numbers. We've gone up to 31 and 35. Okay, now let's take a big step up and go to 25 microfarads. And let's before I hit compute, remember 31 decibels low end gain, 35 decibels high end gain, and remember this spectrum. Wow. Look, our low end gain has gone way up here. We're actually passing through frequencies that are less than 20 cycles per second. 
look down here. Now our low end gain is at 35.4, high end gain is at 35.5, so we have flat response through all of the uh, desirable guitar frequencies. Okay, so it looks like 25 microfarads gives us fabulous uh, improvement in gain and also uh, really excellent frequency response. Now let's see about the law of diminishing returns here. Let's go to 100 microfarads. Remember 35.4, 35.5, and remember the shape of the spectrum. Well, spectrum's a little steeper, I'll give it that. Uh, now we're uh, down to what, around 15 cycles per second. Not that it really matters since the speaker, uh, the guitar, and our ears are not capable of uh, either producing or responding to those frequencies. And look down here, the gain, 35.5, 35.5, a tiny improvement in low end gain, no improvement in high end, of course. So uh, really, by jumping up four times in uh, bypass capacitor value, we see very little change in the spectrum or in gain. In the past, uh, I've always done this by trial and error. Uh, just plug in a different uh, bypass cap, strum a few chords, and listen to it. And that's probably the final step that you should take after you've done this uh, to see if you really like what the tone uh, sounds like. You know, you can look at a spectrum like this, but actually hearing it is where the uh, real decision has to be made. Well, on that happy note, I guess it's time to bid farewell here on our milestone 100th video. Uh, I know Rusty is beside himself. He's so excited about this. And I am too. And I just want to say that over the last year, I guess, uh, we've kind of grown into a family of about 4,000 subscribers. Um, and I just love hearing from you, the comments, um, and the kind of uh, camaraderie that we share here with their common interest in tube amps. So it's been a real honor getting to know you, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.